Terrell, five days into this fight. Tell us what you're experiencing there in Kyiv. Yeah, right now, well, thank you for having me on the show. Right now, I'm at a checkpoint about 20 minutes outside of the city where I'm with about 15 men who decided to answer their government's call to protect their country. They took up arms. Right now, their job is very simple, to make sure that no saboteurs are entering the city or exiting the city to other towns and shooting at uh, their armed forces. Today, I was witness to this unit um, shooting and uh, eliminating two suspected uh, Russia saboteurs uh, after multiple warning uh, warnings not to advance um, beyond where they were asked to uh, advance, uh, uh, they 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 actually they, they shot into the vehicle um, and ki and killed them. The police officers came investigated and said that they suspected them of being saboteurs. That's uh, common uh, fear at these checkpoints, and it's something that's been going on around the city uh, since this war began. Terrell, the Daily Beast reports two of its journalists were shot in Ukraine yesterday. How concerned are you yourself about becoming a target? Well, if you're with these people, it's a very real possibility. Uh, you do the best that you can. You make sure that you're geared up, make sure that you have your helmet on at all times. But if you decide to do this type of work, that's the risk that comes with it. There's really no ifs, ands, or buts about that. But hearing, I just heard about those two journalists being shot and it's certainly uh, a, a very chilling to to hear that especially where i'm at right now where the where, where, where anything can happen at any moment i didn't expect to come here and see two people lose their lives but that that unfortunately it was the suspected saboteurs but that's part of this work terrell finally what kind of resistance are you witnessing from ukrainians fierce resistance uh what, what you see on including the the resistance that i saw earlier today you see resiliency, you see people, uh, many of these people uh, are not trained. They are lawyers, they are shoemakers. Uh, one is a museum director and all these people say that they are scared, but they say they refuse to be slaves to Russia and they're, and they're taking up arms, whether they're fearful or not, so that they will not have to sit under Russian rule. So great resilience. Colonel Jacobs, former National Security Advisor General McMaster says Russia is facing, quote, an impossible military problem. Take a listen. In this next 72 hours are going to be really important. Russia's initial aims have been frustrated. The, 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 the military problem gets harder and harder for them uh, as they extend their lines of communication and supply lines. If you look at the numbers of forces, you know, it looks like a lot, you know, 160,000. Okay, what, about one third of that is combat troops. Now you divide it across four different axes. You know, it's pretty easy, easy for that force to become dissipated and to become absorbed in the vast territory of Ukraine, you know, a country of 40 million people that occupies the space of Texas. Colonel Jacobs, when I asked you about this last night, you were not quite as optimistic. I wonder if your thinking has changed at all. Well, it's still going to be difficult for the Ukrainians. Uh, they have, don't have the forces that they really need in order to repel the invasion. But the uh, Russian operations plan is a bit muddled. Their whole idea is to divide the country in half. To do that, they decided to go through large cities first and secure them rather than bypass them. That's tough to do. It's tough to fight in cities. And what they're trying to do is fight in, fight in the cities without destroying them first. It's going to be extremely difficult. So instead of bypassing those cities and dividing the country, they're trying to do two plans at one time, and it's becoming increasingly difficult to do so. If the Ukrainians can hold on, if they can counter the airstrikes and the artillery strikes that are coming and that are bound to come in larger, in larger measure, if they can repel with anti-tank weapons the large convoys of armored vehicles that are headed to the capital. If they can do that, they do have a chance of repelling the Russians. But it's going to become extre extremely difficult uh, for the Ukrainians to do that. Uh, they're holding on, but they really do need help. Colonel Jacobs, I, I just want to underscore for our viewers, you saw urban warfare while serving in Vietnam, right? This is expertise that comes from lived experience. When Terrell talks about the fact that there are shoemakers, there are lawyers who are now taking up arms in the interest of protecting their city and their country, what will conflict look like as Russia moves into major cities? 
Well, very messy, and nobody should know that better than the Russians. They fought in Stalingrad among the rubble and with their backs to the river and defeated the Germans. Um, so they know exactly what uh, 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 operations in built-up areas are like, and they're not very pleasant. What they're trying to do is they, they don't want to knock the buildings down if they could possibly avoid it, because that assists the Ukrainians in their defense. So that's why they're moving large, large numbers of armored vehicles into the, into the city. That's going to be difficult, too, because they can't turn around in some of the streets. Uh, they're easy to hit with anti-tank weapons. Um, but there's one thing to keep in mind. The Ukrainians have Molotov cocktails, and they're, they're really no defense against uh, the, large, the large scale of armored uh, vehicles that the Russians have. Nevertheless, they're the, the, the Ukrainians are serious, and they're going to make it extremely difficult for the, for, for the Russians to move through the cities. So the initial idea that the Russians would send forces from the north to the south, from the south to the north, and link up and chop the country in half, which should have been accomplished already, uh, is slowing down, at least partially because they're going into the cities as well, and it's going to be difficult for them to achieve the Russians, for them to achieve their objectives in short order.